Hi, I'm David, and this is the Biology Classroom. This is a paper discussion video, so get ready with this paper, and let's go through the questions and answers together. Question 1 talks about an enzyme involved in the browning of fruits such as bananas. A wants you to describe how to make a 1 to 10 ratio dilution of the enzyme extract. A 1 to 10 dilution means 1 part of the stock solution in a total of 10 parts. Mix 1 part of the enzyme extract, polyphenol oxidase, with 9 parts of water for this dilution. When you do this, the concentration of the new solution will be 1 over 10 of the stock solution. In B, we have some information about an investigation of the effect of pH on enzyme activity. The subject and enzyme were mixed in a calorimeter tube at different pH. The absorbance was measured at 15 seconds intervals for 3 minutes. The independent variable is the pH as this is what the student changed to see how it affects the enzyme activity. 2. Identify one variable that the student has standardized. This question wants you to state a control variable that was mentioned in the procedure. You are not asked to suggest control variables that should be maintained. In part B, it was mentioned that the calorimeter tubes were equilibrated at a set temperature. The wavelength used was set at 470 nanometers. At the beginning of the question, it was mentioned that the student made a 1 to 10 dilution of the enzyme extract. So, the enzyme concentration was controlled at a constant. Lastly, the reading was done in a fixed time interval for the same total length of time. C shows the result at pH 5.0. 1 wants you to calculate the initial rates of reaction. The initial rate of reaction is calculated using the steepest part of the graph from the origin. You should not include the part where the graph starts to increase less steeply and begins to level off. So, in our case, we should not take anything beyond 30 seconds. You should draw a tangent from the origin up to 30 seconds. Then, the rate can be calculated by dividing y by x. 2 says that the optimum pH for polyphenol oxidase is 7. You are asked to sketch the line you would expect to get for the rate of reaction at pH 3.0. Since the pH is further away from the optimum pH, the rate of reaction should be lower. The formation of the colored product would be slower, leading to an increase in absorbance less steeply. In D, we have another experiment to investigate the effect of substrate concentration on the rate of the enzyme catalase reaction. You are asked to describe a method a student could use to collect the data. In a design experiment question, you must describe the three variables, important procedure, reliability, safety precautions, and a control set. List down all the points you want to include, then arrange them in a logical sequence. First, describe how the independent variable is fixed. You should have at least five values for this. The student was only given a 0.2% dopamine hydrochloride solution, so dilution had to be carried out to obtain the rest of the solutions. You need to describe how to dilute the stock solution to get at least two other solutions. You can also use a table to show how it is done. Then, we need to add the tubes to a water bath at a fixed temperature. State the temperature if you have a logical value in mind. The enzyme and substrate solutions are equilibrated separately. Note that the reaction starts as soon as they are mixed, so you can't mix them before thermal equilibrium is done. A buffer solution is added to the enzyme to standardize the pH for the reactions. The previous question mentioned that the optimum pH is 7, so this is a logical choice. Then, state the volume of enzyme and subject solution being added. They are controlled variables too. Do not use the word amount as it is not a measurable word. Before a calorimeter is used to measure the absorbance, we have to calibrate it. You can do this by using a blank or a tube that only contains water. Place this tube into the device and set it as zero. After that, we can mix the solutions in the calorimeter tube. The reaction starts right away, so we must place the tube into the calorimeter immediately. A digital stopwatch is used to time the reaction. Then, describe how the dependent variable is measured. 
the absorbance is measured at set time intervals for a fixed total length of time. You can use the intervals that were mentioned in the previous question. Make three replicates for each concentration and calculate the mean values for each of them. This is to increase the reliability of the data. To calculate the rates of reaction, we can plot a graph of absorbance against time. Then, use the method in C1 to calculate the initial rate of reaction for each concentration. When writing about safety precautions, you must identify the hazard, state the risks, and describe the precautions taken. Polyphenol oxidase and dopamine hydrochloride are irritants. The experimenter should wear gloves throughout the investigation. Lastly, prepare a control set. A control set is there to prove that the dependent variable is affected only by the independent variable and not any other factors in the experiment. In this case, you can use distilled water instead of enzymes to show that the reaction does not take place. In E, we have a table that shows the inhibitory effects of various anti-browning agents on polyphenol oxidase from different plants. The student concluded that heated onion extract was the most effective anti-browning agent and that EDTA was the least effective. Use the information to suggest why this conclusion may not be supported. You should look for evidence that makes the comparison invalid or the aspects of this method which makes it unreliable. First, the enzymes are from different plant sources. This means that the polyphenol oxidase may not be identical. It is not a valid comparison if they are not the same. The data are from different scientific papers. They are not obtained by the same scientists using the same method. So, we should not compare these data and conclude them. Besides, we do not know when each of the papers were published. They may be out of date. Without the source, we also do not know the reliability of the data. Next, there are some uncontrolled variables, or at least we do not know if they were being standardized in these investigations. This includes temperatures and pH of the reaction that occurred, volume and concentrations of the enzyme, substrate, and the anti-browning agent used. Statistical tests and analysis should be used for the comparison to know if the difference are significant. The student concluded just by looking at the values without any statistically important comparison. There is no information on what substrate was used. We do not know whether the anti-browning agent was tested on bananas or other fruits. Different fruits may contain other substances that may affect browning. There is no information on the type of inhibition. It is not a fair comparison if the inhibitor works differently. Seven anti-browning agents were investigated. Many other anti-browning agents may have greater or lower impacts. If we do not test all of them, it is not quite right to say that heated onion extract was the most effective and EDTA was the least effective. To have a more valid comparison, all of the anti-browning agents should be tested on all sources of the enzymes. If each is only tested on one source of enzyme, we do not know if they act differently on other sources of enzymes. Lastly, the comparison has low validity as there are two independent variables, the types of anti-browning agent and the source of the enzyme. F says that a sulfur-containing molecule in the heated onion extract acted as a non-competitive inhibitor to the enzyme. You are asked to sketch the curve that shows the rate of activity for polyphenol oxidase treated with the heated onion extract. A non-competitive inhibitor lowers the Vmax and the rate of reaction. So, this new line should be lower than the first one and has a lower Vmax. Question 2 is about lichens. They are sensitive to air pollution. The abundance of lichens can be measured by using a grid made of transparent plastic. In an investigation, scientists calculate the percentage cover of lichen on trees to determine the relationship between distance from a road and the levels of air pollution. A1 state two variables the scientists should standardize in this investigation. The question asks for variables that were not standardized or mentioned. Do not state any control variables that were already included. They should only include one species of trees. This is because Lichens may associate differently with different types of trees. 
the height of the grid above ground should be controlled. Otherwise, the difference between the abundances may be affected by the distance from the road and the height from the ground. Sampling should be done on the same side of the trees. For example, only sample the side facing the sunrise or the side facing the road. All the trees being sampled should be the same age and size. The older and larger trees may have more lichens growing on them due to the availability of space. There is a mark for AVP. For example, the orientation of the grid being placed. Lichens grow in a particular shape. If the grid was placed differently each time, the percentage cover may be different. 2. State one risk and the safety precaution that the scientists should take when measuring the abundance of the lichens of the tree trunks. This is an investigation being done outdoors. You can get the answers from the general risk assessment in outdoor activities. The trees and other plants in the area may cause scratches, allergy, and irritation. Some plants may release toxins. Suitable PPE such as helmets, gloves, face shields, goggles, and face masks should be worn. The sampling area may be a habitat of different animals. These animals might bite or transmit diseases such as toxoplasmosis. The experimenters should work in a group or travel with an expert who knows how to avoid these organisms. Suitable PPE should be used as well. The lichen itself may cause irritation or an allergic reaction. They should wear gloves and face masks. Fungus spores may cause lung infection if inhaled. Many fungus spores contain allergens which can trigger a range of respiratory symptoms in those susceptible. A mask should be always worn. The sampling site is very close to the road as it is the independent variable. Accidents such as collisions may occur. The scientists should con off the road or wear a high-vis vest so that the drivers can notice them easily. Lastly, objects found in the area can be a hazard too. For example, wood and falling branches may cause injury if we step on them accidentally. Hard hats and protective footwear should be worn. B wants you to calculate the percentage cover of lichens on the tree trunk. 39 out of 90 dots are black. So, the percentage cover is 39 over 90 times 100. C is about the Spearman's rank correlation coefficient. The ranks for the variables are 7 and 5 respectively. The difference is 2 and d squared will be 4. Then, you are asked to calculate the coefficient. The sum of d squared is given. n is equal to 10 as 10 trees were sampled. Substituting the values in the equation will give you 0 0.759. Remember to show your answer in three significant figures. 3. State the conclusions that can be made from the calculated value of Spearman's rank correlation coefficient. The RS value can range from negative 1 to positive 1. Negative 1 shows a perfect negative correlation, and positive 1 shows a perfect positive correlation. 0 means that there is no correlation. Our RS value is pretty close to 1, so there is a strong correlation. The value is positive, so it is a positive correlation. This means that as the distance from the root increases, the percentage cover or abundance of lichen increases. 4. State how the scientists could use the calculated value of RS to determine whether or not the correlation is due to chance. First, they need to find the critical value of RS at P equals to 0.05 or less. This can be obtained from the Spearman's rank correlation significant table. In biostatistics, we always use P equals to 0.05 or a 95% confidence level unless the question mentioned otherwise. Then, compare the calculated and critical RS values. If the calculated RS is greater than the critical RS value, the correlation is significant and it is not due to chance. If it is the opposite, the correlation is not significant and it is due to chance. That's all for today. If you think my videos are useful, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.